Drawing from Psalm 42, we share practical biblical insights on how to overcome depression. So this morning, we are uh, continuing. This is the last message in the series on overcoming negative emotions. Uh, if you will recall, uh, we've touched on two earlier. Uh, we talked about overcoming fear in the very a uh, couple of weeks ago, overcoming fear. Uh, then we dealt with overcoming anxiety. And today, we will deal with the last one, overcoming depression. Right? Uh, this is again a very prevalent, very common emotion all of us struggle with. So we will talk about that and uh, look at biblical truths to help us overcome feelings of depression. Now, in case you missed the earlier two messages in this series, um, these, these messages are available online at our church website, apcwo.org slash sermons. You can go there, uh, listen to the earlier sermons, get the sermon notes, and so on, and just uh, catch up on that. Uh, but we want to begin this morning just by reminding ourselves of some of the scriptures we've been uh, looking at uh, throughout this series um, that tell us that we can overcome whatever we face, especially uh, the negative emotions we face. So we're just going to uh, repeat those verses. Let's go to First John chapter 5, uh, verses 1 and verse 4. Let's read them out together, please. Whoever believes that Jesus is the Christ is born of God. For whatever is born of God, let me hear you, overcomes the world. And this is the victory that has overcome the world, our faith. So whoever believes that Jesus is the Christ, you're born of God. You have God's life and you have God's nature in you. You're born of Him. And as a person who's born of God, the Bible says, whoever is born of God overcomes the world. So you are an overcomer. The Bible has declared you to be that. And so you and I must you know, look at ourselves. I can overcome. Yes, we are going to face challenges. And we may have to battle these negative emotions which we are talking about. But you do it with the conviction, with the knowledge that you will overcome. Because God said, whoever is born of him will overcome or has overcome the world. And this is the victory. This is the way we get victory. It says, through our faith. So let's make this declaration loud, bold, and strong. Let's say together, let's go. I am born of God and I overcome this world and all that is in it. I overcome by faith. Another scripture we've been repeating is 1 John chapter 4 and verse 4. So let's read that out also together. You are of God, little children, and have overcome them. Because he who is in you is greater than he who is in the world. So in the world, you've got to face all kinds of things. And in the context here, he's talking about demonic things, evil spirit, the spirit of Antichrist. You'll face all of that. But you're of God and you've overcome them because greater is he who is in you than he who is in the world. So let's affirm this together. Let's go. Jesus who is in me is greater than anything or any power that I face in this world. Amen. Now I need you to be a little louder than me. I got the PA system and you don't. <laughs> so you got some energy. Say it out loud. Okay. Right. So talking about overcoming depression, you know, all of us have these feelings of uh, discouragement, sadness, uh, disappointment, uh, sometimes it's feelings of hopelessness or helplessness, uh, gloominess, dullness. We all have these feelings. Uh, various things happen in life that make us feel that way. We all go through those kinds of things. But for many of us, we get out of it, you know, in a day, in a two, two day or two, you come out of it. But if these feelings linger on, and sad to say, sometimes it could be weeks, months, in some cases it's years, then medically they say you're clinically depressed, you're, you're in a place where uh, you're depressed or you're, you're, you're under depression. It's, it's not the place where you're supposed to be. But sometimes uh, we may find ourselves like that. And so 
we want to address this uh, because it's a it's a very serious thing and also it's quite common and what is interesting Amy was telling me about it is it's actually very common among teenagers young people now we may think young people have a lot of energy are all excited about life they want to enjoy life and all of that but this depression is very common among young people teenagers early 20s and so we have to learn how to overcome these feelings of depression and uh, depression not only affects our emotional state that is how we think feel and act but it can also affect our health physical health and you know a person going through depression um, they find even ordinary things even simple things doing those simple things they find it very hard very difficult to do those things sometimes and some of us may have experienced these things um, you know there's a, a loss of motivation you don't feel motivated to do things uh, there's a uh, there's a feeling that nothing matters there's no purpose in life I why am I living you know life is not worth living or sometimes it even ex is expressed like this I wish I could die it's all on end it doesn't make sense uh, sometimes we feel like sleeping all day and it's not because of the weather <laughs> you just want to lie down in bed don't want to get out just don't want to face life we dread going through the week or taking up facing up with our responsibilities and so on so these are just a few things that are indicators that you know actually you're feeling depressed the good news is there is hope there's a way out uh, and uh, that's what we want to talk about that's what we want to focus on and as we have mentioned earlier in this series you know we encourage people to receive professional help so uh, if you are fighting one of these negative emotions especially when it comes to depression please we encourage you reach out for help don't stay locked up in the room by yourself because there are people who can help and get help reach out for help there's nothing wrong in getting professional help whether it's through counseling and we have uh, uh, good counselors with us uh, at Chrysalis counseling there's nothing wrong in getting help through that or medical help if that's what's needed so please we encourage you to reach out for the hand up and what we encourage us especially us as, as a believing community is to apply biblical truth apply the things you're going to learn this morning that we're going to learn while you also are getting professional help there's nothing wrong with that are you with me don't think that just because you're getting help that is a sign of unbelief it's not it's a sign of being wise you're wise about things God has put people around us so we can get help from them is that okay right and at the same time you apply apply the Bible apply the the truths that we are going to discover this morning from his word and um, uh, of course uh, whoever's helping you will tell you that hey you're good you don't need to come back and you're you're fine and you know then uh, you can uh, once they approve you can discontinue so and discontinue meeting with them but continue with the word of God Psalm 42 we're going to go to Psalm 42 we're going to read verses 1 through 11 so essentially the entire message this morning is going to come out of this psalm so we're just going to read the entire psalm uh, and then we will focus in on certain uh, verses here in Psalm 42 so let's read Psalm 42 verses 1 through 11 and if you'd like to you will um, we'll just read it out loud together are we ready let's go as the deer pants for the water brooks so pants my soul for you O God my soul thirsts for God for the living God when shall I come and appear before God my tears have been my food day and night while they continually say to me where is your God when I remember these things I pour out my soul within me 
For I used to go with the multitude. I went with them to the house of God. With a voice of joy and praise. With a multitude that kept a pilgrim feast. Why are you cast down, O my soul? And why are you disquieted within me? Hope in God, for I shall yet praise him for the help of his countenance. O oh my God, my soul is cast down within me. Therefore, I will remember you from the land of the Jordan and from the heights of Hermon, from the hill Midzar. Deep calls unto deep at the noise of your waterfalls. All your waves and billows have gone over me. The Lord will command his loving kindness in the daytime. And in the night his song shall be with me. A prayer to the God of my life. I will say to my God, to God my rock, why have you forgotten me? Why do I go mourning because of the oppression of the enemy? As with the breaking of my bones, my enemies reproach me. While they say to me all day long, where is your God? Why are you cast down, O my soul? And why are you disquieted within me? Hope in God, for I shall yet praise him. The help of my countenance and my God. Now, this psalm, many Bible scholars believe, was written by David. The psalm of David. Now, you can find David's emotions here. He says and several times, Why are you cast down, O my soul? Why are you disquieted? Now, these are old English words. Uh, if you look up some of the contemporary versions, these are the words that, this is how they will translate it. You know, and you'll find words like depressed, despair, discouraged, restless, sad, upset, in turmoil, troubled, moan. Message Bible makes it nice and clear. It says, down the dumps, crying the blues. So that's how David feels. This is a depressed psalm. Okay. No, just make that up. <laughs> it's a good psalm. But David is feeling like this. He's feeling down in the dumps, crying the blues. And because he mentions certain places, like he mentions Jordan and Hermon and the hill Midzar, uh, most scholars think that it was written when he was uh, during the time of Absalom's rebellion, you know, David had a son, Absalom, who rebelled against him uh, and he tried to overthrow him. And so uh, David had to uh, actually run away from his capital, Jerusalem, and he went on to this place to hide. So uh, it's at that time, many people feel, feel that that's when he wrote this psalm, when he, when, uh, during the time of Absalom's re rebellion. And, and, and you, can, you can see there uh, that David is really crying, he's grieving, he's, he's not in a good emotional state. He's crying, weeping. And he also tells us why. He says, because my enemies are oppressing me. They're coming after me. They're oppressing me. And they're taunting me. They're saying, where is your God? David, you're king. You're the psalmist. You're this wonderful person who's written all these psalms. Where is your God? So they're taunting me. And David is saying, is feeling like this. Right? Now, we're not going to study the entire psalm. But what we want to do is look at how David is breaking out of the situation. Yes, he's feeling like this. But how is he coming out? What is he doing to get out of it? And that's what we want to focus on. Are you with me? Right? So... I, I've broken this down into seven points. Now, somebody wrote me a note saying, Pastor, your sermons have too many points. Stick to three points. <laughs> now, I have to tell you before I start, I have seven points. The reason is, there is so much in the psalm. I cannot condense it down to three. Sorry. So, 7.7, 7, right? <laughs> anyway, we'll keep them quick. We'll make it quick. So, what do we see David going through? How is he coming out of this feeling of being really cast down and disquieted you know, or depressed and hopeless? How is he coming out of it? What is he doing? We want to just 
track with David through this psalm. So number one, we see that he recognizes his feelings. So recognize your feelings. And you find this in both verse 5 and verse 11. You know, in verse 5, which we just read, he says, Why are you cast down, O my soul? Or why are you depressed? Why are you in despair? Why are you in turmoil? Why are you crying the blues? Why are you down in the dumps, O my soul? Again, he repeats the same thing in verse 11. So, it's important that you recognize your feelings. There's nothing wrong with that. God created our emotional makeup. He created our feelings. He gave us the capacity to feel. And it's okay that you recognize you're feeling like this. And in fact, it's important you recognize those feelings. Because if you don't recognize it, you won't do anything about it. You won't take action. To get out of that feeling of being down. So you need to know, hey, I'm not my normal self. This is not me. Right? Something's wrong. I'm feeling low. I'm feeling dull. I'm feeling down. Because when you recognize it, then you can begin to do something. To recognize your feelings. The second thing that David does is he talks to God about it. He shares his feelings with God. Psalm 42 verse 6. He tells God. Let's read it. Oh my God. My soul is cast down within. He's telling God. Lord. This is how I'm feeling. I'm feeling low. I'm feeling upset. Or I'm feeling, you know, whatever language you want to use. I'm feeling depressed. I am not, I'm not in a good state. He's talking to God about it. Right? So it's good to talk about your feelings. Like we said at the very beginning, you reach out for help. You talk to people, people who will help you. But it's also good to talk to God and say, God, I feel like this. I'm feeling, he says, cast down. I'm feeling low. I'm feeling depressed. Of course, it's obvious there are situations around him that are making him feel like this. You know, uh, we go through all kinds of things. Sometimes maybe you, uh, somebody lost a job. Uh, maybe somebody, you know, maybe uh, there was a financial loss. Uh, maybe they lost a loved one. All of us have to go through that in life. You, you know, people die, people pass on. And, 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 and there is grief associated with that. Uh, maybe uh, a friend betrayed you. Maybe uh, uh, people that you were very close to, they relocated, they moved, and you've lost friendships. Uh, all kinds of things happen in life that then make you feel down. Recognize it. Talk to God about it. So the Bible tells us in, in, in the book of Hebrews, when you come into Hebrews, um, in, uh, that, that in Hebrews 4.15, it tells us that we have a high priest Jesus is our high priest, but he's a high priest who sympathizes with our weaknesses. Or he is touched, the King James puts it, he touched by the feelings of our infirmities. That means he, I don't know how it happens, but he feels what you feel. He's touched by it. And I like how some modern versions render that verse. Some, the, 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 the Passion Translation puts it like this. He understands our humanity and is in touch with our reality. That's Jesus, your high priest. So, he's not there saying, oh, you feel like that. I wonder how it feels. No, he's touched by your feeling of being dull, of being low, of being depressed. He's touched by it. So, talk to him about it. Lord, I feel like this. I need to get out of this. I need to come out of this. I know it's not me. I know it's not just my normal self. I need to come out of this feeling of being depressed. So share your feelings with God. Share your feelings with people who are around you, who can help you talk about it. Uh, don't uh, ignore it. Number three, we find David, he is encouraging himself in God. He's talking to himself. So encourage yourself in God. Speak his word. Notice what he says there again in that same verse 5. He's talking to himself. He's saying, why are you cast down, O my soul? Why are you disquieted in me? Now he's encouraging his own soul. He's telling his soul, hope in God. I will yet praise my God because my help comes from the presence of God. He's talking. 
to his own soul. Are you understanding? That's what David is doing. He's telling himself, hope in God. Praise him. My help comes from the Lord. Look, speak God's word to yourself. Encourage yourself with God's word. So this is something you and I must learn to do. You know, take authority over your emotions. Your spirit, let your inner man, your spirit rise up. And say, I will take authority over my emotions. Speak the word of God over your emotions. And you know, if you and I train ourselves to do this when things are good, then when things are not good, you know what to do. Amen? Because you've, you've been doing it consistently. Talk the word of God to yourself. This is the word of God. When things are good, speak the word. When things are bad, it'll automatically come. You'll be able to speak the word over yourself and over your emotions. You know, in 1 Samuel, the 30th chapter, we read about an incident in David's life. And this happened way before he actually became king. And, you know, uh, Psalm 42 was written when Absalom rebelled against him. This happened way before. In 1 Samuel, the 30th chapter. At that time, David was not king. He had an army of maybe 400 to 500 people with him, men with him. He had a small army. And... Uh, they were living in a city called Ziklag. He, his family, and the family of all his uh, soldiers, 400 of them, 400, 500 of them, their families were living in the city of Ziklag. They had gone away to engage in battle. But when they came back, they found that another tribe, the Amalekites, had come in and destroyed Ziklag. They had taken captured are taken captive, all their families, and they destroyed everything. So David and his 400 men, when they come back to Ziklag and see all of this, they are so discouraged. They're so upset. To make matters worse, these 400 men turn against David. Meaning they say, we're going to stone David. Now imagine a situation like that. You've lost everything and the people who are supposed to be on your side are now all against you. All of them. 1 Samuel chapter 30 and verse 6. We read this. Now David was greatly distressed. For the people spoke of stoning him. Because the soul of all the people was grieved. Every man for his sons and his daughters. Let's read the rest of that verse together loudly please. But David strengthened himself in the Lord his what did David do? He strengthened himself. Like imagine that. One man. 400 people against him. Upset with him. Everything lost. And yet in that moment. He does something so tremendous. He strengthens himself. In God. Amen. Now you and I need to learn to do that. Because there may be times when things are like this. You know it's, it's really bad. Not your fault, but it has happened. What do you do? Strengthen yourself in God. Get your strength from God. Draw strength from Him. And that's what David did. So, you and I must learn to encourage ourselves in God. And this is a powerful testimony. So, pray a lot. Pray in the Spirit. Pray in tongues. Uh, uh, feed upon the word of God. The word of God strengthens you and me. Let's read Psalm 119 verse 28 together. Let's read it out loud. My soul melts from heaviness. Strengthen me according to your word. Now this is a little old English. My soul melting heaviness. It simply means man I'm falling apart. Depressed. Okay. My soul melts with heaviness. Heaviness in the in the. King James or New King James Version will be translated in modern language as depressed. But what is the psalmist saying? He's saying, strengthen me through your word. So while I'm feeling like this, I'm going to draw strength from the word of God. So learn to do this. Speak the word of God to yourself. Encourage yourself in God. Number four, what else does David, do we see David doing? He puts his hope in and we see that verse 5 and also in verse 11, he speaks to himself. He says, why are you cast on, O my soul? Why are you disquieted within me? Hope in God. Let's all say that together. Hope in God. Say it one more time. Hope in God. He says, hope in God. Right? Now, 
There's a difference between hope and faith. Hope is the pace setter. Hope goes before faith. Right? When you, you must have hope and then you can have faith. Faith is the substance of things hoped for. Right? So first you have hope. Hope is something that says, you know, I believe that this will happen in the future. It's going to happen. It will happen. That is hope. Faith pulls hope from the future into the now. Are you understanding? But without hope, you cannot have faith. There's a difference between faith and hope. But you need to have hope. Because faith is, gives substance to what is hoped for. If you don't have hope, you, your faith has nothing to work with. Are you understand? But hope is in the future. Faith is in the now. Faith brings into the now what hope places in the future. But hope is a very important part of our lives. Okay? So you need to have hope. And so David says, hope in God. Hope is an expectation that in the future, what God has promised will happen. That is hope. You understand? That is hope. That in the future, it will happen. It's still there. It, it, it's out there in the future. But that hope is very, very important. So he's telling himself, hope in God. Don't give up hope. Yes, in the future. But that hope is important. The hope that this will happen, will come to pass. God has promised it. It will happen. Hope in God. And one important way that we keep our hope alive is by painting it on the canvas of our imagination. So when I'm praying in tongues in my room, I see myself standing with 50,000 people. That's my hope. Now you can't take it away from me because it's already painted on my imagination. Are you with me? That I see myself standing in an auditorium or in a place where we are ministering 50,000 people. So how are you going to fit 50,000? Don't people, if they fit in my imagination, that's fine. <laughs> in reality, God will figure it out. That's, that's just a technical problem. But that's the hope with which I pray. God, one day, this is what's going to happen. I, with hope, I see, you know, churches raised up across the nation. I, I, that's hope. That's a picture of what future will be like. But that's important. Right? So you paint a picture in your mind of what the future will be like. Keep that picture painted. If you lose that picture, hope will disintegrate. Are you understanding me? So you need to keep that picture refreshed on the canvas of your imagination. Keep that picture painted. So whatever it is, maybe, let's say, as parents, you have hope for your children. So you see your son, your daughter being, you know, what you want them to be, successful, blessed. Keep that picture in your mind. Son, my daughter, they're walking with God, they're serving God, and uh, you know, keep that picture. Or maybe you're a businessman, you're running a business. As you want to see yourself successful. Keep that picture. See yourself successful. Whatever you know, that would mean to you. That your business is doing well. Are you understanding? That hope is important. Because, and of course, no, don't be vain in your imagination. It's got to be based on the promise of God. So otherwise it will be fantasy. People say you're living in a fantasy world. <laughs> So don't get off on a fantasy. We're talking about hope. And hope is based on what God has promised. And we know about Abraham. It says, against all hope, in hope he still believed. According to what God had promised. You see? So his hope was based on what God had promised. When there was no reason to hope, he still hoped. Why? Because he had a promise. So the promise of God becomes the basis of your hope. Now hope is so important. Hebrews the 6th chapter and the 19th verse. It tells us this. That let's read it together. This hope we have as an anchor of the soul. Both sure and steadfast. Which enters the presence behind the well. Now think about what he's saying here. He's saying hope is an anchor of the 
salt. So he's borrowing a word from um, shipping or marine time. Anchor. So, especially in, in, in olden times, you would know, when the ship was out in the middle of the sea or out in the ocean and, and, and it was very stormy, they would drop anchor. So, from maybe either sides of the boat, uh, they would uh, drop something heavy, maybe metal or maybe stone, that would go all the way down to the seabed or the ocean floor. So, it stabilizes the ship. In the middle of the storm. Because it's almost like you've got yourself planted in the ocean bed. When you drop anchor. So even though there is storm going all around the ship. They've dropped anchor. Stabilizes. Keep standing until it subsides. Then you roll, roll it back in and keep sailing. So the writer of Hebrews is saying. The hope, hope we have is an anchor for our so, now this anchor, you're not dropping it down into the ocean bed, but this anchor reaches behind the whale and locks into God himself. So hope anchors you in God. Are you understanding? it? That's what he's saying. It reaches behind the whale into the very presence, into God himself. And so he says, hope. Is this firm? It, it, it is this firm, steady anchor for our souls. It anchors us in God. See how important hope is. Amen. So, when you're feeling, going through these feelings of depression, down, stir up your hope. Just paint afresh on the canvas of your imagination what God has promised. God said He will do it. I'm seeing it done. Yes, it may be in the future, but I'm seeing it done in the canvas of my imagination. And Lord, I thank you for it. My hope locks into God because it's based on his word. Amen? Number five. The other thing we see David doing in Psalm 42 is he remembers God. He remembers. He recalls to his mind. What God has done. You see this in verse 6. He says, let's read it. Oh my God, my soul is cast down within me. Therefore, I will remember you. Pause. So he says, God, I feel like this. But I will remember you. Remembering is very important. Just to remember. Look back. There are times when looking back is good. And that is one of those times. To look back and see what God has done in your life. To remember the goodness of God to your life. To see how he has been faithful to you in times past. Remember the goodness of God. There's another psalm related to this. Well, let's read it out. Psalm 77 verses 7 through 12. Let's read it out loud. I want you to be louder than the mic. Let's go. Will the Lord cast off forever? Will he be favorable no more? Has his mercy ceased forever? Has his promise failed forevermore? Has God forgotten to be gracious? Has he in anger shut up his tender mercies? So he says, Selah, pause. And I said, this is my anguish. But I will remember the years of the right hand of the Most High. I will remember the works of the Lord. Surely I will remember your wonders of old. I will also meditate on all your work and talk of your deeds. You see the first few verses. How the psalmist is saying, you know, has God forgotten us? Where is God? Has he forgotten to be merciful? Has he forgotten to be good? Has he forgotten to help me? Has he forgotten to bring me out of my problem? Where is God? So while he's, then he says, pause. Hey, don't continue like this. Pause. Stop. Shift. I say this is my anguish. This is how I'm feeling. But what am I going to do? I will remember. Three times in those two verses he's saying, I will remember. I will remember the years. What God has done in the past. I will remember his work 
works. I will remember his wonders. Amen. So when you're feeling down. Depressed. Just take some time. To look back. Hey God has been faithful. God has been good. See how he brought me through that situation. And that situation. And that situation. How God intervened in all those times in my life. God has been good. Amen. And as you remember, the God of the past is also the God of the present. And is the God of your future. Amen. He was faithful to you then. He's going to continue to be faithful to you now and in the days to come. He's not going to forget you. Now it may seem like God's forgotten or God is silent. Or God is not doing too much. But remember, he's coming through for you. Amen? So, that's another thing David does here. Last two. Number six, he praises God. We read that both in verse 5 and verse 11. You know, he says, Why are you cast down on my soul? Why are you disquieted within me? Hope in God, for I shall yet praise Him. I will still praise Him. Even though I'm feeling like this, I'm still going to you see, many times it's nice to praise after you've got, you know, a huge bonus, a huge promotion, a big job, a new car, a new house. It's, you know, happy, 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 praise the Lord, praise the Lord. <laughs> yeah, that's good. But how about times like how David was feeling? It's tough. But he says, I will yet praise him. I will still praise him because he's worthy. My feelings don't change who God is. My feelings are like the weather. They come and go. But God is God. He's exalted. And he's worthy of praise all the time. So David's saying, I will still praise him. I will still praise him. You know, now it's not easy at those times to sing a song, to worship. But thank God, you know, we have some tools available. So, you know, you select your favorite song or songs, put on your headphones, and try to sing along. Sing with those songs. And you get started. And soon you'll find that you're able just to praise Him anyway. So if you need help, it's okay. Play some music, sing uh, some songs you like and, and just sing along with those songs just to worship God, just to praise Him. And soon you'll be able to praise Him. Uh, uh, you'll be able to rise up above these feelings. Now praise is so important. And I just want to just emphasize a little bit on that, on praising God. And the importance of praise to fight this thing of depression. In Isaiah 61 verses 1, 2, and 3. Um, we know these verses talking about the anointing of God. Uh, I'll just read those verses uh, for us. The spirit of the Lord is upon me because the Lord has anointed me to preach good tidings to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives and the opening of the prison to those who are bound. To proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord and the day of vengeance of our God. To comfort all who mourn. To console those who mourn in Zion. To give them beauty for ashes. The oil of joy for mourning. The garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness. That they may be called the trees of righteousness. The planting of the Lord. That he may be glorified. So all this happens because of the anointing. Because of the spirit of the Lord. He says all these things will happen. He gives beauty for our ashes. He gives the oil of joy for our mourning. And he gives the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness. All this happens because of the anointing. And I believe in the anointing of God. That because of the touch of the Holy Spirit. This whole yoke of and this burden of depression will be lifted. And today we're going to pray as we, get, as we close a little later on. We're going to pray. And I believe that by the anointing of the Holy Spirit, the yoke of depression will be broken. The burden of depression will be lifted. You may have heard of the testament that was shared. We played the video, you know, sometime back of Rennie. She happened to come to the service one Sunday and she was, you know, 
fighting through this whole thing in her own life. And in that service, nobody touched her, nobody laid hands on her, but God just touched her. Her life began to change. Amen. What she had been battling for years suddenly began to change. It was the anointing of God that destroys the yoke. It removes the burden. So that's what he's describing what the anointing of God will do. But then I want to bring your attention to this. That the Holy Spirit gives the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness. Now heaviness like we said is that old English word talks about depression. In the place of the spirit of depression, what is the Holy Spirit giving us? He is giving us the garment of praise. Now this morning, when you wanted to wear your shirt on, did you go and take the shirt or did the shirt come to you? Or whatever you're wearing. (laughs) You went and actively put it on. What is the Holy Spirit giving us? He's giving us the garment of praise. So hello. Hello. Praise shirt. (laughs) Or praise whatever. Wear this on. Wear it. And if you wear this, the spirit of depression will lift. He's giving the garment of praise to get rid of the spirit of depression. But you wear it on. Put it on. Are you with me? So you wear You put on your garment of praise. However you want to visualize that. You put on your garment. You get into it. You start praising God. He says, I got this garment on. I'm going to praise him. And he says, the Bible says, the Holy Spirit is giving us the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness or depression. Get rid of it. And that's another thing I want to emphasize here. You know, sometimes, I'm not saying all cases, but sometimes the depression can be caused by a demonic spirit. Like we said, there's a spirit of fear, there's a spirit of depression, a spirit of heaviness. But as you praise him, and by the anointing of the Holy Spirit, that spirit of depression can be expelled. Get rid of it, out of your life. So praise, praising God destroys depression. And joy, the all of joy for mourning. So joy is God's antidote for depression. It comes from the Holy Spirit. Praise is powerful. Amen? And last one, number seven. He says, my help comes from the Lord. He says, for the help of his countenance. That word help is that, that Hebrew word, Yeshua. Uh, which is a Greek equivalent. In, in, the, in the Greek, you will find um, for salvation, like sozo or soteria. In the old Hebrew, Yeshua translated help, salvation. Deliverance, victory, same word translated depending on the context. It's translated many different things. In this case, Yeshua is translated as help. My Yeshua comes from his countenance. His countenance simply means his face or his presence. So my help comes from his presence. So declare that. I will praise him because my help comes from his presence. Are you with me? So... He's, he's, clo- he's saying that I'm going to praise God because my help comes from the presence of the Lord. And you declare that my help is coming. Help is on its way. God is faithful. My help comes from God. In the situation that I am in, my help comes from God. Even the problem I'm facing, my help comes from God. With the challenge I'm facing, my help comes from God. Declare that. Amen. So seven things here, finally. Let's review them. Number one, let's read it together. Number one, recognize your feelings. Share your feelings with God. Encourage yourself in God. Speak His word. Hope in God. Remember God. Praise God. And declare, my help comes from God. This is what we see David doing in the psalm. Yes, he's battling these feelings. He says, I'm feeling cast down. I'm feeling disquieted. I'm feeling depressed. I'm feeling down in the dumps. I'm crying out the blues. You know, he's feeling this stuff. But here's what he's doing. He's not going to live in that. He's going to live in victory side. Amen. Now I believe all of us can do this. Sometimes we may need each other. That's why we have life groups. And you know, you can get, a, get together with one or two other believers and together uh, you can help each other. You can strengthen one another. You get somebody to pray with you. You pray for someone. But that's very powerful. 
Amen. I want to just share a little bit of my little story and then we will go and pray. You know, uh, there are, you know, I do feel sad now and then. I mean, through, as we go through life, you know, all these little things happen. But there was a time in my life where I was depressed. And this was going, I'm going way back many years ago when I was in the U U.S. as a student. Uh, first of all, I didn't like snow. It looks nice on picture. <laughs> but when you have to live there, it can be very depressing. <laughs> so I was, I was, I was in, in Ohio at that time. Uh, and snow, winter was bad. And at this particular year, it was when I had just gone to the U.S. So uh, some of you already heard the story. So please allow me to remind you. <laughs> But, you know, uh, I, it was the early part of the year and uh, I was working in my research lab. But here's what I started noticing. I would go to my lab, do my work, do my, attend my classes, do my work, come back and sleep. Now, I'm, I'm, I usually, I mean, I sleep maybe six hours, seven hours like that. And in those days, I was like very strict, only six hours sleep. But here I was now, slowly, I was sleeping 12 hours a day. Sometimes I was doing 14 hours. You know, that was it. That was what was happened to me. And, um, and you know, it, it went through like for about a couple of months. Spring came and we were close to July by that time. And, um, you know, I realized something is wrong. Now, it took me a while to figure this out. It's like, hey, something is wrong. Uh, first of all, I don't sleep like this. I feel totally demotivated. I feel very lazy. You know, I began to just, like, David has recognized this feeling. I was like, look, all these things, these are not normal to me. Something is wrong. And uh, then, uh, you know, I didn't know too much what to do. Uh, other than I knew Bible stuff, but practically I didn't know too much. But... What I did is I called the pastor of the church, Pastor Tom Hare. I, was, I used to go to a church there in, in Cleveland Heights. It was called Church of the King. And pastor Tom Hare was a pastor. And so I called him on the phone. I just said, Pastor, can you just pray for me? I didn't tell him what I was feeling or any of these. I just said, so he just prayed a general prayer. But while he was praying, I noticed something. I felt something lift. Now that sounds spooky to some of you. <laughs> But I'm telling you what I felt. <laughs> I felt something lift. And that's when it dawned on me. Maybe there's a spiritual side to my problem. Oh. Then I connected the dots. I used to do a teaching those days. And which I still do today. Called conquest of the mind. You see sometimes we teachers can be blind. <laughs> we tell everybody else what to do. And then it takes a little time for the tube light to come on. <laughs> hey. Maybe I need to apply that in this situation. Right? Oh, okay. This maybe this is demonic. Maybe there's a spirit of depression that I have to deal with. And maybe this laziness that I'm feeling is actually demonic. It is a spirit of laziness. Now I'm not telling that about you. <laughs> I'm speaking about myself. So don't go around saying, Pastor said I have a spirit of laziness. <laughs> That's for you to figure out. I'm talking about what I, found, I figured out for my life. Because I was sleeping so much. I was going through this. I said, maybe there's a spirit of depression that I have to deal with. Maybe there's a spirit of laziness I have to deal with. And I remember, you know, as I kind of took a few a couple of days to kind of put all this together, understand it then I went back to the word of God this is what the word of God tells me to do it tells me that I have weapons my warfare they are mighty through God they can pull down these strongholds so maybe I have let these strongholds you know take place in my mind my emotions I'm going to pull it down I know how to do it right so this was the 4th of July I remember it because it was American Independence Day it was a holiday and I said I'm going to get my independence this morning and it was early in the morning, I said around 8 o'clock or something. I woke up. I said, man. And this is what I did. I woke up that day. And I said, I took some time to pray. And I said, in the name of Jesus, I command the spirit of depression to get out of my life. I command the spirit of laziness to come out of my life. I have given place to this, but I'm telling it to go. In the name of Jesus. You said you really did it? Yeah, that's what I did. I'm telling you what happened. And that moment, that morning, this whole 
thing that was on my life left. I'm not making it up. I was there when it happened. <laughs> I was there. That whole thing left. And my life changed. It came back to normal. Amen? So the point I'm saying is this. Sometimes it could be demonic. There's a spirit of depression, a spirit of laziness, things that, I, that, that we've allowed to you know, get into our emotions and take place. Uh, take place, uh, a habitation there and we need to expel it. We need to get rid of it and say, I'm reclaiming my emotions. I'm reclaiming my soul. It's mine. God gave it to me. Amen. And I'm not going to let depression occupy my soul or laziness occupy my soul. I'm reclaiming it and by the authority of Jesus' name, expel it. And I was free, completely free from that moment on. Amen. So this morning, we're going to do this simple. I'm going to lead you in a prayer. I'm going to pray over ourselves. And then I'm just going to pray over us. And I believe, like we read from Isaiah 61, the anointing, the presence and the work of the Spirit can destroy yokes and remove burdens. So if there's something like that on your life this morning, I want you to receive that. It's the Holy Spirit, do it for me. Amen? But we also apply these things that we learn. From the word of God. Just make it a normal practice in your life. To maintain a good healthy emotional life. Speak the word of God. Keep your hope alive. Keep praising God. Uh, keep remembering the good things God has done in the past. All these things are healthy. Or practices that live uh, help us be healthy emotionally. Amen. So you don't have to be depressed to do these things. Do them and you're fine. Amen. Let's rise to our feet. Worship team, why don't you come up? I'm just going to lead in prayer and then after that you could uh, sing a nice happy song. All right. So I'm just going to lead us in a, in a, in a simple prayer, that you, in, a, in a simple declaration that you just declare over your own self. And expect God to touch you, make you whole emotional. Now if you have no problems emotionally, no worry. There's no harm in speaking good things over your life. Amen? So let's say this out boldly together. God restores my soul. My soul is holy ground it belongs to God in Jesus name I expel every spirit of depression every spirit that oppresses my mind or my emotions in any way I declare my mind is whole my soul is blessed my emotions are blessed. I'm filled with joy. I'm filled with peace. I'm filled with hope. In the name of Jesus. Now just praise him. Thank him for it. Thank him. Say, God, I thank you for your joy. I thank you for your peace in my mind. I thank you for your hope, Lord. I thank you that you will do wonderful things in my life. I thank you that you will do wonderful things for my family. I thank you will do wonderful things for my children. Just thank him with faith. Just praise him. Thank him in advance for the good things that he will do in your life. Just praise him. Praise him. Let hope fill your heart. Paint pictures that are based on the word of God in your mind. Let hope fill your heart. And so Father right now. I take authority over the congregation before me and over those who are watching or listening to this. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, I come against every spirit of depression, every spirit of heaviness, every oppressive spirit. And in the name of Jesus, I command it out of the lives of people. I declare people free. I release the anointing of God to touch every person, to destroy every yoke, to remove every burden, to set God's people free. And Lord, we thank you for the power and the work of your Holy Spirit, Father. Thank you that we will walk whole, healthy, and blessed emotionally. 
We thank you for it, God. And we bless you in Jesus' name. And everyone said, Amen, Amen, Amen. Before we close this morning, before we let the worship team lead us in a happy song, we want to give an invitation for anyone who's never received Jesus Christ into your life. I want to lead you in a simple prayer. You know, the Bible tells us that all of us need a Savior. We're all sinned. We've all sinned against God. And we need somebody who could save us and bring us into a wonderful relationship with God. And the Bible tells us that Jesus Christ died for our sins. He was buried and he rose up again. And he's alive today. Anyone who believes in him receives forgiveness for their sins. So if you would like to do that, if you've never done that in your life before, and if you'd like to do it this morning, I'm going to lead you in a simple prayer so that you can receive God's free gift of salvation, that you can be brought into God's family. You can be made a son or a daughter of God. I want to lead us in a prayer. If you've never done this before, just say this prayer with me. Lord Jesus, I ask you to forgive my sins. Come into my life. Make me a child of God. And help me follow you. And you alone. The rest of my life. I pray this in Jesus name. Amen. Anybody here, you prayed this prayer with me for the very first time. We want to celebrate with you. We want to see you. So if you prayed this prayer with me for the very first time this morning, could you please raise your hand? Just let me let us know you did it this morning. Anybody here this morning, you prayed this prayer with me for the very first time. I'd just like you to see your hand if you've done this. Just to raise your hand. I don't see anyone. Okay. In case you did it, our greeters are there with uh, these bags. We'd like you to receive that bag. So on your way out, Please let them know that you prayed this prayer to receive Jesus into your life and receive that back from our greeters before you exit. I'm going to uh, declare that benediction over our lives and our ministry leaders are calling up to be available here in front to pray for the people. Our life group leaders and ministry leaders, please come, make yourself available. I will declare the benediction. If you need personal prayer, you could come and our, we'll have our worship team just lead us in a, in a happy song. Okay, good. <laughs> Let's close. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, our Heavenly Father, and the sweet fellowship of His Holy Spirit be with each of us always. In Jesus' name, Amen. Thank you for listening. We trust this message was a blessing to you. For more free resources, including sermons, sermon notes, TV programs, publications, please visit apcwo.org. For information on APC Bible College in Bangalore, please visit apcwo.org slash Bible College. Please remember to download the All People's Church Bangalore app from the app or Google Play stores.